Hello and hey, Dress Mount with Baldur's Gate 3. So you want to be a sorcerer? Lightning in a bottle. Does that mean you're a bottle? Let's dive in. Sorcerers are suffused with magic, a latent power that waits to be tapped, wants to be wielded. This pulls them into the adventuring life and into our party. At level 1, we select our sorceress origin. Did we receive our magic from a draconic bloodline, elemental air, or from chaos itself? For this build, we're saying we've descended from a blue dragon. Many will opt for storm sorcery, and that is also perfectly acceptable. Many will definitely prefer that, so I need to thrust that into the conversation. I have chosen Draconic Origin for the extra hit points and single target damage, though cannot say enough good things about Storm Sorcerer's bonus action to essentially disengage or ability to deal damage to those within 10 feet 3 meters while casting, either. For racial bonuses, choose your preference. You can make a case for just about any race and point out how it fits the build. Choose what you like. BG3 offers so much reactivity to your race that I think it'd be a shame to not immerse yourself in that. Attributes are going to depend a little. Bit of preference sprinkled in. I would go 8 Strength, 12 Dex, 14 Con, 8 Int, 16 Wisdom, and 16 Charisma. Charisma is our main stat, obviously, so we can be the face of the party if that is your want. We have a high Wisdom because you read the title and know we are multiclassing shortly. The high score will give us access to more spells and better saves on those spells, so you don't have to go to a 16 if you know you won't be using them as much. 14 con because everyone needs hit points and we want to keep those concentration checks flowing smoothly. Dexterity is something we always want with its ties to armor class, initiative, and how common we make dex saves from enemies. We dump strength and intelligence because they do the least for our build, though we miss strength when we're trying to jump around or juggle things in our inventory for sure. At level 2, we will drift to a holy bend, worshipping the deity of our choosing in the Tempest domain. After all, the power we wield is of great service, and in that service can be amplified immensely. With Cleric 1, we receive all the goodies of a first level Cleric, armor proficiencies, the guidance, cantrip, access to helpful utility and supportive spells, and from our domain we get heavy armor proficiency and Wrath of the Storm, a reaction that when we are hit within 5 feet 1.5 meters we can cause the creature to make a dex saving throw, they then take 2d8 lightning or thunder damage, it's our choice, taking half damage on a successful save. It's a cool little feature. At level 3, we will take our second level of Cleric, getting the main draw from the Cleric multiclass, Channel Divinity, Destructive Wrath, which, of course, lets us use maximum damage when rolling for lightning or thunder damage, guaranteeing an immensely destructive action coming back on short rest. Our combination of class levels also gets us second level spell slots, which we can use to upcast lightning and thunder spells we already have, like Chromatic Orb and Witch Bolt, annihilating enemies at this level. Character level 4, we go back to Sorcerer and we'll be here for a while, or maybe the rest of the character if you so choose. We'll talk about that later. But with Sorcerer 2, we get Meta Magic, have a small pool of sorcery points, but luckily in BG3, there is no cap to how many we can have at a given time. So if you'd like to dump spell slots into points before a battle, you can freely do that. And what we'll be spending those points on are either Careful Spell, which will sculpt the spell around your allies, auto succeeding on saving throws, Distance Spell, which will increase range by 50%, or give touch spells a range of 30 feet 9 meters, Extended Spell, which doubles the duration of your spells, or Twin Spell, that allows you to cast a single targeted spell at two creatures. We're definitely taking Twin Spell, your choice on the second option. Careful and Distant are the leading contenders. I'll likely go Careful, but think more people may find Distant more attractive. Character level 5, we immediately get another meta magic option and won't even discuss the others. We want Quicken Spell. For 3 sorcery points, we can cast an action spell as a bonus action. Huge for pumping out that damage or allowing you to get off an important situational action while still getting your normal spells off in the same round. More versatility, we will take it. This combo of levels gets us 3rd level spell slots, and we now know a 2nd level spell. It's definitely a pick your favorites type of list. I always like Misty Step if you wanted a suggestion. Level 6 is Sorcerer 4, our first ASI, a little bit late, but not too bad. Pump up that Charisma to 18. At level 7, we'll go Sorcerer 5, get those 4th level spell slots and a 3rd level spell choice. Haste is great, but we want to concentrate on a handful of things already, so pick your preference. I'll leave the spell choosing up to you, especially as we ascend into these higher levels. We're upcasting for our damage still. Chromatic Orb and Witch Bolt Twinned on Wet Enemies is pure destruction. Level 8, maybe even back at level 7 or earlier, we can make the decision to go back to Cleric. We're only Cleric 2 right now. The main things we want from here in Cleric are all the way up at level 5 and 6 of the class. 5 for Call Lightning and 6 for second use of your channel divinity per rest. The feature of pushing a large or small creature 10 feet 3 meters isn't bad, but we wouldn't go this deep for it without all the other stuff. Can't oversell Call Lightning as it will really trim down on the amount of spell slots you go through in a given encounter, due to it dealing the full damage of the initial action on every subsequent cast. Meaning if you upcast to 4th level it will do 4d10 every time you use it, 
unlike say Witch Bolt, which would do 4d12 the first cast and then only 1d12 for the subsequent damage cast. Continuing to level up, the exact leveling path gets hazy, especially considering that many will forego the extra levels in Cleric at all. Sorcerer 10, Cleric 2 is very popular. Sorcerer 9, Cleric 2, Wizard 1 may also be the way you'd like to go, as getting that single level in Wizard, as many of you already know, allows you to copy any spell scroll into your spell book. If you're wanting to use a few of those spells that you achieve in this way, you'll need a boost to your intelligence through items, a very famous headband comes to mind, or you will have to make sacrifices on your other attributes. But the one level dip of Wizard is extremely strong in how we would get the incredible Chain Lightning spell, for instance. That is why it's hard to say where each of you will branch off the path. The end goal for me is to end up at Sorcerer 6, Cleric 6. I have a bias to be positive towards Cleric, so it's easier for me to want to put those levels in. Though I saw the player number charts with the class firmly in the basement. The flexibility of using Destructive Wrath for that second use of maximum damage roll per rest might draw enough of you to forego the higher level Sorcerer spells or potentially the Wizard dip, unless you wanted to go Cleric 6, Sorcerer 5, Wizard 1. It's all possible and it's all good because the core of the build has been there from character level 3 and as such we're just building on top of that. In game we want to prep any combat or enemies that we can having your support focused party member if you have one to help us go nuclear. It's better than the sum of two characters in most instances. Having that character cast haste on us and or create water on our main damage targets allows us to one round almost any one thing in the game. So while it's a little bit slower damage to maybe quicken a create water spell before blasting Witch Bolt yourself, you can pull it off yourself and do not require a support style character to help you, to be clear. And I don't know when else I can throw this in, but while haste would be cancelled by our Witch Bolt, causing us to lose both effects and become lethargic, very not good, Hold Person will allow the auto crits on your attacks, if you're close enough, even though you technically lose the concentration on it before the attack rolls happen. But you can quicken Hold Person and Blast Witch Bolt for the auto crits just fine. Again, if you're close enough, super situational, but might help sometime. And that's about all we need to talk about. I'm still a couple weeks away from really focusing on items. If you'd like to share what kinds of items you found or you know would go good for this build, I'm sure your fellow commenters would appreciate it. I'm just not ready to go full spoiler mode myself or for the big chunk of viewers that are still making their way through their first playthrough and don't want knowing a specific thing exists to dampen their fun while they're just looking for like what they could make a different one of their characters. So fair warning, heads up in the comments, people are likely going to talk about items and I'm encouraging it. I'll let a little fight play out on screen, but that will do it for me. I hope to catch you in the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Be safe, guys.